is Timory Taylor. I'm here giving this course on behalf of Infinity Drain. The title of this course is Linear Drain System Design, Installation, and Application. So over the presentation, we're going to be spending a significant amount of time discussing waterproofing techniques and how that ties into the specification of linear drain systems. An important question when specifying a linear drain is whether you want to create a barrier-free bathroom. Waterproofing directly impacts the type of installation in addition to the floor height needed to achieve a zero threshold shower. So the barrier-free bathroom discussion leads us right into how to design an ADA restroom. So an ADA compliant shower enclosure, whether you can have any shower curb or where you should place the linear drain, how the floor should be pitched. We'll, we're gonna address all of those things. So finally, we're gonna wrap up with a short overview of the outdoor architectural trench drains and the potential for their application as well. So to build a knowledge base, let's start with your traditional shower enclosure. So one where the drain is right in the middle of the shower. So in the center drain placement, the shower floor is sloping 360 degrees in a bowl shape toward the center of the shower. So this floor way pitch can limit flooring material choices to either small mosaic tile or cutting large format tile on a diagonal to accommodate the floor pitch. So if you see in the image how the stone floor is like pie pieced together to accommodate that pitch to the center drain, it limits the material that you can utilize, so consequently limiting your design. Some glamour shots of other application with the center drains here. So this is typical drain results that you see when people aren't paying mind to necessarily the aesthetic of the drain and then just picking their uh, floor tile without taking that into consideration. So a linear drain is a great option for creating a barrier-free bathroom because the shower drain can essentially become a floor drain. Most importantly, the drain could be used as a design element. So I think we've all seen the showers where the drain was not really taken into consideration or was specified through the installer, and it is at the expense of the design. So, how are linear drains different from a center place shower drain? So the location of the drain and the slope of the floor. So the location of the drain is changed from the center of the shower to along one of the walls or sidewall or back wall or along the threshold of the shower enclosure. So now the floor is sloped toward the linear drain in one single plane instead of the four way pitch that you had seen initially toward the middle. So this allows the use of large format tile, stone slab, or any solid surface material. And since you're sloping the floor in one direction toward the linear drain, you can also keep the integrity of the tile instead of cutting to accommodate the dish style pitch. So <laughs> the most important questions, right? Two questions to ask, which one do I like? This is purely style and aesthetic, and which one do I need? So this will be based on whether you're gonna be constructing a barrier-free bathroom or contingent on the waterproofing method that your installer will be using. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit as well. So question number one, which one do I like? So your style question, Depending on the linear drain manufacturer, there's typically four types of great styles you're going to see. So one being wedge wire, the one you see on the bottom right hand side, perforated on your top left, tile inserts, bottom left, and then your solid grate. So your perforated grate is your least expensive option. It's normally constructed of 304 stainless steel in 16 gauge or less. Manufacturers offer different patterns, but they're essentially fabricated the same way on a brake press with the pattern either punched out or cut on a laser. The wedge wire is the sturdiest, so it's constructed of 316 stainless steel in 12 gauge. It has a load rating of up to 5,000 pounds, so it's a great option for bathrooms as well as outdoor installations. 
uh, such as driveways. So the tile insert frame allows the drain to blend in with the rest of the shower floor. So essentially making that drain just disappear. So the tile insert tray comes empty and the tile setter makes a mini tile floor within the train. So a uh, tray, excuse me. So depending on the manufacturer, the frame can accommodate flooring material up to three quarters of an inch thick. So in this style, there's a quarter inch gap between the tile frame and the linear drain channel. And this is where the water drains down to the outlet through to the waistline. So our solid grate or a solid grate drain is the st solid stainless steel that you see there. So the solid grate's a bit of a hybrid between the perforated and the tile insert frame. There's no perforations in the stainless steel top. So the water drains around the edges, much like the tile end on the quarter inch gap on all four sides into the channel. So the style of top can also be fabricated in glass as well. So all the linear drain top grates can be removed like by a hook, a key, any common household tool to service or clean the drain. So you would essentially just pop that what we would call gray or solid gray up to clean, to access the throat to clean the drain. Uh, most of these drains also come with a supplemental hair catcher as well. So back to this slide, we address question number one, the style. So question number two, which one do I need? So this is gonna be contingent on your waterproofing method. So traditional North American waterproofing methods require multiple levels of installation, skill set, um, limited square footage. The traditional method for installing a tiled shower begins with the installation of a mortar bed. It's sloped to the weep holes. These are weep holes in the clamping floor drain. A waterproofing membrane, typically referred to as a pan liner, and is subsequently placed over this pre-slope and clamped into the drain. So pan liners may consist of metals such as lead and copper or plastics of PVC or CPE. And in the Northeastern part of the US, lead and copper pans are still a really popular method of waterproofing the shower. So some regions of the country, specifically Southern California, also employ hot mop systems so this involves play, applying a layer of asphalt or roofing and roofing felt to build up a pan liner. So pan liners are carried up to the height of at least three inches above the finished height of the curb and must not be penetrated by any fasteners. And pan liners are not designed to allow for the direct application of ceramic or stone tile. Membrane or pan liners are also a popular waterproofing method. So this is the most main, primarily the most mainstream way to waterproof. Using these vinyl pan liners or rubber liners. And this method uses a thick flexible membrane to create almost like an envelope around the shower floor up the small portion of the walls, kind of like wrapping a present or doing origami folded up into the corners to allow for um, no water to escape. So there are two types of linear drain systems that work with traditional waterproofing styles, site sizable and fixed length. So site sizable linear drain works with the standard USA installation using a shower pan liner and a clamping floor drain to connect the, to the waistline. This system is sold as a complete kit and modifications can be made to the length and outlet placement on site hence the name site sizable. So this provides ultimate flexibility in making the drain work for the site specific conditions, right? It's malleable, you can make accommodations. So it also allows the drain to be sized on site for perfect wall-to-wall -wall installation. So visually, wall-to-wall -wall installations look more aesthetically pleasing. Functionally, it allows a single plane floor pitch with no water pooling in the corners of the shower. So complete water removal when placed along the threshold of the shower with no curb or barrier. 
Channels are constructed of stainless steel or PVC and utilized a neutral pit pitch, which just means like a flat bottom channel. Since the outlet is located on the on site, the channel cannot come pre-pitched. So it's a myth that the channel needs a drastic pitch to get the water headed towards the outlet. Uh, water is always looking for its low point or level. That is the outlet. So a, a standard, you know, slow or a smaller pitch through capillary action as the channel fills with water, it pulls itself down the waistline. So what's left in the channel is just water droplets held on by surface tension. So here's the site size of a linear drain install with the PVC channel. So notice the sandwich style of installation, the waterproofing being sandwiched by the two mortar layers. So the mortar would be kind of act as the bread. So a secondary mortar bed must be installed to provide load distribution and a bonding surface for the floor tile. So P gravels placed around the clamping floor drains weep holes to prevent blockage before installing the secondary mortar bed, kind of like um, when you add pebbles to the bottom of a plant for drainage. So the installation can be summed up as a stand sandwich style of install. So mortar, waterproofing membrane, mortar, and the mortar is the bread of the sandwich, and the waterproofing membrane is like the meat. So this is another example of a site sizable linear drain installation with the stainless steel channel. Uh, some local municipalities like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, they all require metal plumbing components. So in these cases, the all stainless steel site sizable linear drain is a great option. So this is the fixed length linear drain. So the second type of linear drain we had mentioned works with traditional waterproofing and a clamping floor, floor drain is the fixed length. So this is a set size, set outlet location linear drain system. There's no on-site flexibility. For new construction or large multifamily or hospitality projects where the speed of installation is a priority, it could be a good option. So depending on the manufacturer, the outlet's either cent centrally placed or it'll be offset. So the fixed length linear drains have pre-pitched channels since the outlet location is predetermined. So the channels are constructed of either PVC or stainless steel, depending on the manufacturer. And most companies offer a custom fabrication service if needed. So some of the challenges of using a fixed length drain include, you know, achieving that perfect wall to wall installation we were talking about um, and just being able to adjust to the standard construction tolerances, the things that happen on the job. So um, they're not as malleable, right, as the site sizable. So if the wall or outlet location is off by any amount, the specified drain may no longer fit the space. So here's just the fixed length drain in more detail. So this is the side detail of it. So you notice that we're still utilizing that clamping floor, floor drain and that sandwich style of installation we had talked about, but the channel comes in one welded piece instead of different components like the site sizable model. So now we're gonna talk about a little bit of other different types of waterproofing methods. So modern waterproofing techniques have developed. Um, normally they're performed by the tile trades and they fall into two different types. So we have the liquid membrane and the fabric sheet membrane. So the liquid membrane is like a paint on material. And it has this consistency of yogurt. It dries into a hardened rubberized membrane that can fit any shape shower enclosure. The fabric membrane waterproofing uses a non-woven fleece fabric. It's applied to the sloped mortar bed using thin set. Cove and corner pieces are used to waterproof the entire shower enclosure. And this can also be used as a vapor barrier if the shower uh, happens to contain a steam unit. So this is a side view of the fixed flange installation using a liquid membrane waterproofing. So instead of the sandwich of traditional waterproofing, this is like an open face sandwich. So one mortar layer, waterproofing, 
then set, and then tile. The channel shape is different than the site sizable or fixed length and has a one inch flange on all four sides. So instead of tiling to the side of the channel as you would with traditional waterproofing, tile is applied directly on top over the channel flange. Waterproofing is either painted onto the flange edge or fabric is glued to the edge to make the shower water tight. So there's no waterproofing membrane to clamp onto. So a coupling or fern co is used to connect the channel outlet to the waistline. So being able to tile directly on the waterproofing membrane instead of having a secondary mortar layer saves floor height and installation and can be beneficial in designing that barrier free or curbless shower. So finally, under this umbrella of modern waterproofing is the newest innovation in shower construction. So this is a complete shower system. That take, this takes all the guesswork out of shower construction and saves time and labor at the job site. So a complete shower system includes a linear drain, a pre-sloped shower floor, and a wall board. There all, may also be accessories like, you know, benches, part of the system, other aspects of it, but the wall board and pre-slope shower floor may be prefaced with fabric or liquid waterproofing, or it may need to be applied on site. Again, it's contingent on the manufacturer. So these types of complete showers usually come with a system warranty, which gives homeowners and installers and specifiers that peace of mind. So you're designing a bathroom, where do you place the drain? So the most popular placement is along the back wall. So you'll notice this bathroom has a shower with a curb. So in curb showers, you can essentially place the drain along any side since there's a physical barrier between the dry and the wet side of the bathroom. So if you're removing a tub to create a large shower enclosure, Site-specific conditions might require that the linear drain is placed along the wall with the shower fixtures. So this most likely where the tub drain was located. So depending on which way the floor joists are running, the waistline may be able to be re relocated closer to the finished wall. So placing the drain along the threshold of the shower is popular for barrier-free or curbless showers. So for this installation, a wall-to-wall -wall fit is critical to keep the water from traveling to the dry side of the bathroom. So with this placement, it's always recommended that the dry side of the bathroom be waterproof and pitched just a little more slightly towards the linear drain. Creating a true wet room means that the entire bathroom is waterproof and sloped toward the drain. So the drain moves from being a shower drain to a floor drain. Having a floor drain is kind of like having an insurance policy. So if there's a plumbing failure on the dry side of the bathroom, the bathroom can also be you know, sprayed down and squeegeed for cleaning. Creating a wet room is essentially what happens in most ADA compliant bathrooms. So there's three types of ADA shower, uh, ADA compliant shower enclosures. So two types allow the bather to fully roll into the shower enclosure, while the smallest enclosure requires the bather to transfer himself to a seat in the space. So make note as we go through this of the measurements as absolute minimums like the larger spaces increase maneuverability and ease of washing and clients don't have to be currently confined to a wheelchair to make use of these principles homeowners designing their forever home or aging in place and universal design principles all make use of these shower guidelines so it may also be useful to put a barrier free shower on the first floor of a multi-floor residence in case the homeowner is not physically able to ascend the stairs or step into a tub shower. The first type of compliant shower enclosure is the transfer type shower. So in this model, the bather does not need an aid and can physically transfer himself from a wheelchair into the shower enclosure to sit on a seat. So this is the smallest allowed shower enclosure and the only configuration that allows a curve. 
clearance of 36 inches wide minimum by 36 inches deep minimum measured from the control wall. Since there's no curb in the shower, a linear drain may be placed along any side. So if there's no curb in the shower, the recommended drain placement for a shower of this side would be along the threshold of the enclosure going wall to wall. So a standard roll-in type shower is the one where there may be an aid present in helping the bather and they're able to fully roll into the shower area. A curb along the threshold is only allowed if it's no taller than a half inch and must be beveled to make rolling over easier. A 60 inch wide minimum by 30 inch deep minimum clearance is provided adjacent to the open face of the shower compartment. So it's recommended placement for a linear drain system would be along the threshold of the shower to create that wet room. An alternate roll-in type shower is also where there may be an aid present as well helping the bather and they're able to fully roll into the shower area. However, in this setup, the entrance is narrower and not as open as the standard roll-in. So same as the standard roll-in shower, a curb along the threshold is only allowed if it's no taller than a half inch and must be beveled to make rolling over easier. The linear drain should span from wall to wall inside the shower 60 inches. So this will keep the water from pooling under the shower seat and allow a consistent one plane floor pitch. A 36 inch deep minimum by 60 inch wide minimum clearance should be provided adjacent to the open face of the shower compartment. So the 36 inch wide entrance is an important dimension to consider when designing a space with accessibility or universal design in mind. So moving on to outdoor architectural trend strains. So linear drains actually began as outdoor drainage and then moved indoors to the bathrooms. So for architectural outdoor drainage, many factors come into play. The application, the geographical location, um, rainfall levels, all different things that you need to take into consideration when specifying these. So the landscape and hardscape drainage is normally calculated by an engineer using geographic and rainfall information for whatever area you're specifying and how many square feet of surface the drain will be accommodating. So along door tracks, between pavers, the use of French drains are popular for evacuating water in a landscape. So balconies, terraces, patios, uh, use of linear drains to move water away from the structure and capture that runoff so it doesn't come dripping down to other people. These areas may or may not be waterproofed, just depending on you know, what is below the raised area. So I think the most obvious one, uh, given the heat, pool decks. So pool decks are an obvious choice for linear drain. Uh, what we probably see most often when we think of linear drains, linear drains can aid in the pool safety by capturing you know, splashes or water from the deck being hosed down and just helping keeping the surface area dry and allowing it to dry more quickly um, just to evade any dangerous situations. So they can evacuate rainwater as well from the pool area to avoid flooding. So incorporating a linear drain into the design of the wet deck or wet edge pool creates that pond effect. So without the elevation needed for a true infinity edge pool, so in these cases, the linear drain manufacturer would work directly with the pool contractor to fabricate the channel and the grate to accommodate the specifications. So with all that being said, I did want to stop here. Um, I do know that we ran through it a little bit quickly. I do want to go through, monitor the chat, address any questions that you guys have. I do really thank you for your time. Um, again, this is Linear Drain Systems Design, Installation, and Application sponsored by um, Infinity Drain. I hope the material was interesting. I hope this was educational for you. And um, at any given time, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Ask me any questions. If you need assistance with your specifications as well, I'd be happy to do so. So I see one, will you please repeat what you said regarding the hot mop pan 
and its use with stone and tile. So what I had said, and this was uh, coming from Dennis, was that you can't apply the, the tile or whatever it is that you're using as the finished material, the slab directly onto the hot mop. So it's like a tar or a mortar. So you need something to go on top of that, like a thin set to set that tile. So this is an excellent question. Um, I see one from Steven that says, how does the traditional clamp drain flange work against a shower wall? That's a very good question. So it's not going to go, um, if you have the round one up against the wall entirely, there will be, I wanna say uh, like about a half inch gap up against that wall. So there is a product that has that clamp down drain body, the metal one that we showed in those uh, photos with one side kind of flat. So to allow you to push that product, that drain all the way up against the wall to get that finished look. I see one from Michael. Can you show again where the drain goes on ADA shower compartments? Yes, yes, we'll do. So you see here in the standard roll-in type of shower. So you see this is the linear drain right here up against that wall. And this is that roll-in shower with the minimum dimensions that we were talking about. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate your time. Like I said, um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, assist anybody with their specifications. I know that we have quite a few um, architects, we have some designers, uh, what, whatever types of projects you guys are working on, I'd be happy to just help you. I appreciate your time. Great, thank you.